Does this grinder look familiar? It's a refresh of the Barazza Vario, and there's more going on here than a paint job. I found numerous changes under the hood meant to make it competitive in the mid-price prosumer market. The company has clearly responded to customer feedback. Just how well is what we're here to figure out. Is this something you might cross-shop with the Eureka Mignons or the Niche Zero or the Mazer Mini, for example? I'm going to evaluate the Vario W Plus model, which uses steel burrs and doses by weight, but I'll be talking about its twin, the Vario Plus, which doses by time and includes a portafilter rest and ceramic burrs so that you can understand how they differ. Because the burr choice has a significant effect, I'll be installing and testing both options on this unit, the steel ones and the ceramics, to help you decide which type might suit you. You can set up either grinder with the burrs of your choice. Finally, I'm going to tear it down completely and evaluate each of the components and the build quality. So settle in for a uniquely thorough review. Oh. My. God. It's like a miracle. Quick disclaimer. This grinder is a loaner provided by a German distributor called Best Brew, which I have since returned. I paid nearly 200 euros for shipping, so I'd say we're square. The most obvious update is the off-white color, which is now an option alongside the familiar dark gray and silver. They did a fine job matching the color and texture between the plastic and powder-coated parts. You can barely tell which is which. I think the hopper is well-shaped and proportioned. The grinder is a good size for your kitchen. It fits easily beneath cabinets. The size and shape make it easy to work around, too. There's a spool underneath for excess power lead. The unit overall has comfortable touch points, all curved and smooth. There are no sharp edges. You'll enjoy the feel when you use it. This was designed as an on-demand grinder and it's not suited to single dosing, at least not without mods. You'll have difficulties with the coffee feeding when the hopper is nearly empty but it feeds perfectly well when it's about a third full or more. It's not the easiest grinder to dial in, but it's repeatable once you nail it. You'll enjoy consistent results when you use it as intended. It's not a fast grinder. With the steel burrs, I got 40 grams in 32 seconds for pour over and 20 grams in 20 seconds for espresso. Using the ceramic ones, I got 40 grams in 25 seconds for pour over and 20 grams in 13 seconds for espresso. Coffees vary wildly and so will your mileage, but we can conclude at least that the ceramics are noticeably faster. Both burrs are the same size at 54 millimeters and interchangeable. The fasteners are not interchangeable though, so be sure to use the right ones if you swap them yourself. The catch bin is truly magical. Look how clean it is. This is as good as it gets. They've also added a little flap inside the chute to discourage random dumping of that last half gram. When you remove the catch bin, nothing falls out of the chute. This might be the neatest grinder in its price range. If a tidy work area is important to you, this unit would make a lot of sense. There are LEDs now to illuminate what's going on inside the catch bin. My camera isn't recording the lights or the LCD properly, but after some adjustment, I was able to show that the display is perfectly readable even in bright light. If it appears otherwise, that's just my lame camera work. The hopper gate valve looks a bit overbuilt, but it's quite effective. Even when it's full, after the machine has been used, the hopper comes away clean when you shut the valve. 
There's about 12 grams left in the grinding pathway. With the hopper still mounted, I would close the gate, run the leftovers through, and toss whatever I get into my AeroPress. Retention after grinding through was just over half a gram, which is typical for an on-demand grinder this size. Less obvious changes in the Plus series are the alloy grind chamber and the threaded mounting for the upper burr carrier. Previously, we had a plastic chamber with a twist lock mounting, but now it's more like the Forte. Whether you get this version with the scale or the timed dosing one with the portafilter rest, you can still choose between ceramic and metal burrs, which are the same ones used in the Forte. As I mentioned, I'll be testing both types on espresso and pour over. Let's take a look. The blade patterns are quite different. The ceramics have very few cutting edges and are clearly going to do more crushing. That produces extra fines, which are good for espresso. The steel ones have noticeably more blades, clearly prepared to do more cutting and slicing, producing fewer fines, which is good for everything north of the mocha pot, but I'll confirm all that later. Let me just say that if you think the burr material is the distinguishing factor here, I'm afraid you're mistaken. The real difference is the blade pattern. The substance itself is barely significant. Ceramics don't take as keen an edge as steel, but they'll hold what edge they have longer. And they probably stay cooler in continuous use. But those two factoids, which we hear often, are irrelevant in a home machine that's going to perform under load for all of 12 hours a year, if that. Forget about your burrs getting dull or overheating. Those concerns are relevant only in commercial environments. Now, let's look at the initial factory burr alignment using a whiteboard marker. At this point, I haven't used the grinder yet. Well, this looks fine. There's some ink wiped from the entire circumference of the lower burr, and the top one too. This is well within spec. There's no need for any adjustment. If the burrs are significantly out of alignment, that is, not parallel, they'll touch at one point, giving you this clamshell effect. Opposite the point of contact, the gap is too wide. Of course, you can't bring the burrs any closer than touching, so you're stuck. You can't really dial in a fine grind. Espresso will be frustrating no matter how carefully you prep, and Turkish coffee will be full of grit that never settles pour-over ends up with a lot of boulders along with too many fines. Normally, this effect is negligible, but occasionally it can be bad enough to affect performance. If your burrs are substantially out of whack, you'll need to fix them. But if your coffee is all right, your grinder is too. People can get too hung up on this test. It reveals less than you might think. It tells us only how the burrs sit when there's no load on them. But one of them has to rotate, and they have to be adjustable, so there's got to be play in the system. And once they start crunching on coffee beans, they'll shift and vibrate and chatter as the coffee grit flows between them. I like to test the factory alignment during reviews because it's a sign of good quality control. So far, everything looks well-designed and well-built, although we'll learn more about that when I tear it down completely later on. But what about the coffee? I'm going to use the same batch of beans for all of the tests here. We're going to talk about grind quality and flavor. The coffee itself has got to be a constant. I want something dark enough for espresso, but not too dark for pour-over. Using the steel burrs, I got great pour-over, right on par with the stock Eureka Mignon burrs, and nearly as good as my modded Specialita with brew-specific burrs. The aftermath tells the tale. Barazza on the left, Eureka Spet with Brew Pro burrs on the right. We've got minimal fines with consistent principal grit size, making it possible to grind fine overall without slowing things too much. I also made espresso with the steel burrs. The idea here is that with fewer fines, you can grind to a smaller particle size overall to compensate. 
It turned out all right, but it wasn't memorable. It was possible to dial in precisely, and there were no mechanical flaws like channeling, but the texture and richness were lacking. The flavor leaned too much toward the bright end of the scale for my taste. It showed more acidity and less sweetness. I think you could use these burrs primarily for brewing and happily use them for mocha pot, espresso, or Turkish once in a while. The stock Eureka Mignon burrs do perform better with espresso and about equally well for brewing, so I would call the Mignon the more flexible of the two. But there are other reasons why you might prefer the Vario Plus, so let's press on. Now, with the ceramic burrs, I made some really delicious espresso. Rich and balanced and syrupy with good sweetness and bitterness. Better tasting than my beloved Specialita, I hate to admit. Every bit as good as my conical burr grinders. Everyone says these ceramic burrs are magic with espresso, and it's nice to see a product actually living up to the hype. Pour overs, though, were disappointing. Here's the aftermath of one. Big, thick layers of fines on the sides of the paper and the surface. This is the same recipe and paper I used with the steel ones. You really need to brew fast here to avoid over-extraction. I would say keep it in the four minute range and it won't be a total disaster. But then you risk under extracting the more normal sized particles. So if you're using these burrs, try to grind as fine as you can get away with and use a really fast paper and funnel. Maybe drop your slurry temperature a bit too to avoid overcooking all those fines. So which type would I recommend for general duty? I would say that the ceramic burrs do more violence to pour overs than the steel ones do to espresso. So I would choose steel for brewing and occasional espresso and ceramic for espresso and Turkish exclusively. The mocha pot can go either way, really. I've used both conicals and flats and I get different results, but they're both really good. Here's a robot shot using the ceramic burrs. I have a peculiar, slow method to compensate for the robot's temperature issues, which I've explained elsewhere. What I want you to see here with the naked basket is the complete lack of even a hair's width of channeling. This is one sign of a precise grinder. So which edition might suit you? Baratza fits the ceramics on the Vario Plus, which is set up for espresso, and the steel ones on the W Plus by default and this makes perfect sense. If you're shopping for an espresso grinder, the Vario Plus seems obvious, but don't overlook the W Plus fitted with ceramic burrs. That configuration has one advantage, neatness at the cost of workflow. You'll need a dosing cup or funnel, and there's an extra step. However, the catch bin makes this model a truly considerate house guest. It gets an A plus for tidiness. That said, the dosing timer and portafilter rest on the Vario Plus are straight out of the forte, so they work well and offer a bit more convenience. Baratza's portafilter rest is miles better than the Mignon series ones, and the redesigned chute makes both Vario Plus models neater than the Mignons, which will dump half gram clots of coffee onto your kitchen counter 10 or 20 minutes after you finish using them. All right, let's open her up. The shroud comes away easily with just two sheet metal screws. You might recall that I criticized Eureka for using them on the Oro single dose, but in that case, the joint is under a constant load. Here, the screws are merely locating a plastic shroud that snaps into place, so they're fine. The front panel comes away without a struggle and is clearly well made. The PCB is sturdy and the components are robust. This is a quality item. The motor mount is glass reinforced plastic, which is lightweight and combines rigidity with toughness. It's great stuff and not cheap. Notice that you need only to remove the shroud to adjust the belt tension. There's now a tension adjustment screw like the Forte. The motors are the same, but the gear ratios aren't. So the Forte is faster. It's also quieter because it has a metal shroud. 
At first glance, I thought the motor shaft gear had been changed from plastic to metal, which would be a bad choice with this belt drive, but it's gray plastic as it should be. The other gear, which drives the lower burr carrier, is also plastic with a brass insert for the drive mechanism. It's a good design. Plastic is tough, but it won't tolerate friction against any kind of metal. I found nylock blue patch on all fasteners subject to vibration. A nice touch. Everything is nicely laid out with economical use of space. There's very little ground coffee outside the grind chamber. The main PCB is also well made with quality components. The wiring is simple and sensible and the routing is reasonably neat. Now we can see the burr carrier drive mechanism with bronze bushings for the spindle. There's one above the drive gear and a smaller one below that I hope you can see. Some people are skeptical of this arrangement, so I'll be checking it thoroughly a bit later. As I said early on, the burr alignment appears good according to the ink test, but more importantly, the results from simply grinding coffee with it are great. Now, there has been a lot of discussion on forums about aligning the Vario and Forte burrs. The problem that people seem to have is this lower burr carrier. I have read that normal bushing tolerances permit the carrier spindle to tilt in response to belt tension, which pulls the burrs out of parallel alignment. So let's head down the rabbit hole. I'm going to check for parallelism with the motor fastened in place while the system is under normal belt tension. Let's start with the lower carrier. This indicator has a resolution of one one hundredth of a millimeter or around five ten thousandths of an inch. I've used rubber bands on the adjustment arms to raise the spindle to its maximum height. And now I'm going to press the center here to make sure it's seated. I'm checking the distance from the deck where the lower burr is mounted to the rim of the grind chamber's lower housing. I tested several different positions, in line with the pulling force and perpendicular to it and even diagonally, but wherever I positioned the depth gauge, the distance from the grind chamber rim to the burr carrier deck was the same, which means that these two surfaces are parallel to each other despite the belt tension. I tried it with the spindle in a lower position and I got the same result. I also checked the grind chamber upper housing to see if the upper burr mounting deck is parallel to the rim. This too is just fine, which tells us that the part is well made. But will both chamber halves be square to each other? This outer ledge butts against the lower housing's rim and it's too narrow for me to measure with a gauge. It wouldn't be stable. Notice that there's a good amount of thread lash here, which is sometimes a bad thing, but in this case, it's a great thing. It means that there's enough play that the two halves can meet squarely, machined surface to machined surface. You can see for yourself that there's pretty flush contact all the way around here. Most importantly, the quality of the ground coffee tells me that the burrs are nicely aligned and that they stay nicely aligned under a load because if they didn't, the coffee would show signs of that. I'm pretty comfortable saying that the burr mounting surfaces are parallel to each other to an enviable degree, and normal belt tension doesn't appear to be a factor. I suspect that the alignment problems people have been reporting might be caused by excessive belt tension, or perhaps the bronze bushings wear out quickly this is a new unit after all, and I can't predict what it might be like after a year or two of daily use. But I have no reason to suspect anything along those lines. It's more likely that too much tension on the belt could accelerate bushing wear, causing alignment problems after a time. It's important to keep the belt tensioned correctly. Honestly, I don't see anything here that would justify the effort that some users are putting into enhanced burr alignment. There's also the placebo effect to consider. If you put this much effort into tweaking your unit, your coffee's going to start tasting better. That's just human nature. While we're in the neighborhood, let's look at the adjustment mechanism. The lever arms rotate a cam that operates a rocker, which in turn lifts and lowers the carrier spindle. This little two millimeter set screw here is the one you adjust with the calibration tool to establish your starting orientation. 
There's a lot of linkage here, and honestly, I don't like the feel of it. It's like focusing a microscope with chopsticks. But, and this is important, the settings are precise and repeatable. So this system works. It feels floaty and vague, but it's effective. After a complete teardown and reassembly, my preferred grind settings stayed where I had them previously. I was impressed. My biggest complaint is the noise it makes. I thought it was so odd that I recorded it and emailed the clip to the supplier, who assured me it was normal. It's a truly unattractive sound and pretty loud. Not the experience I'm looking for first thing in the morning. But aside from the indirect feel of the adjustment levers and the dismal mechanical chorus, I find this hard to criticize. It works very well, it makes delicious coffee, and it is nearly level with the Forte in many ways now, and priced attractively. I'd say it has earned a place in the mid-range prosumer market. I think you could cross-shop it with the Eureka Mignons, the Mazur Mini, the Niche Zero, and products like that. You just need to be clear about what you want out of it so that you can order the right version with the appropriate burrs. Choose wisely and I think you'll be happy with it. Well, that's about all for today. I've got a number of videos in various stages of development, but no idea which one I'll finish next. I'm sure you'll find it a pleasant surprise in any case, so keep in touch. Cheers!